Hi all, Andrew Pelfrey here from Sailing Dog. Today I'd just like to run through some of the differences between the two types of turnbuckles we use in the Etchells. The Brolga here on the left and the newer PKM model. Uh, to start with, let's just throw them both on the scales we have here. Uh, the PKM first uh, weighs around the 340 gram mark. There you go, 343. Unfortunately, the only uh, the only brolga I have here is attached to an Etchell's lower shroud, um, but I have weighed them previously, and I, I know they're around 400 grams. So I just sort of get my finger underneath here and take the load of the wire off a little. Um, it ends up it ends up coming out at very close to 400 grams, so roughly a 55 gram saving uh, on the PKM. Not a whole lot. Um, but uh, four turnbuckles and an etchels, it's around 200 grams weight saving. Um, so next is just to highlight some of the basic differences between the two. Uh, the Brolga is, um, is, is almost 20 years old now, the, uh, the product. Um, ahead of its time for sure, really cool product. Um, allows the uh, shroud to be adjusted from the windward side in in any conditions really that we sail the etchels i can adjust the thing in you know over 20 knots uh, on the windward side going upwind under full load um, some earlier models had uh, uh, quite a thin thread here um, uh, it was probably found to be not man enough um, this is 10 mil diameter and an m10 thread uh, previous model was eight millimeters. Uh, I think this changed over well, at least 10 years ago. Um, you know, nice uh, calibrate calibrations there. You can see the top of the thread, easy to, um, to, to return to your settings. Uh, and a nice knurled um, body here, um, allowing you to, to sort of wrap your, the top part of your hand, your, your index finger and thumb and, and turn away. Uh, Differences really on the PKM uh, that uh, the thread pitch count is uh, finer. Um, it's three turns to on the PKM equals two turns on the uh, on the Brolga. Uh, it's a nice, cool little uh, red indicator plastic piece there that that's part of the design, so that at a distance uh, you can see where you're set, uh, as opposed to having to kind of get your head down and. And, and look at the t look where the top of the thread is. Um, I, I also like actually the fact that the the knurl uh, it's a smaller diameter body, and the the knurl goes full length, so you can really uh, get your whole hand around the thing once you've got the little lock lock nut at the bottom released. Get your whole hand around the thing, and you know get get some real leverage on there. Um, and also the finer thread makes it. Uh, slightly easier to turn. Um, finally, just note the difference in the toggle pins, uh, this pin here holding the toggle in place. Um, there were some issues with the, uh, with, with the structural integrity um, here over the years, uh, whereas the Brolga has a, a, a tested, proven um, T-fitting. Okay, we'll just go through the disassembly of uh, both units and uh, have a look at how uh, how you go about servicing both and the differences there. Um, I'll just have to uh, come back because I need to knock out this uh, roll pin here uh, on the Brolga, which is, um, it just requires a, a pin punch and a hammer. Uh, luckily today I'll, I'll do it in my vice over here, but when you're doing it on the job on an Etchells and the rig's uh, vertical, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, but uh, first step is to punch that out. Okay, so interesting to note, I'm a couple of minutes into this now, and uh, in punching this roll pin out, you could see it's actually split inside the, uh, inside the hole. And all I've done is use the correct size pin punch and, and start tapping away at it. Uh, this has happened to me in the past before on board a boat and uh, you know it's painful it, it does turn into a, um, a bigger job so one of those typical five minute jobs on a boat that takes two hours uh, so anyway we'll persevere but worth highlighting that 
Okay, back again. Uh, I eventually got the roll pin out. It wasn't too much drama. I ended up grabbing hold of it with some vice grips and, and pulling it out, but you could see it's quite badly fractured. Um, and um, yep, yeah, it, it's now ruined. It won't be using that anymore. Okay, so the next step is uh, we're going to remove the turnbuckle body uh, from the housing. From the knurled housing. Pretty simple. Uh, now the roll pin's removed. This is a right hand thread. Uh, we simply uh, uh, just undo the thread. Okay, um, you can see there the, uh, the, the hole, the through hole that the roll pin goes through. Just a tip, if when you're doing this on board a boat and the rig's vertical, uh, it's hanging, it's worth just placing a uh, a bucket underneath underneath each turnbuckle as, as you undo this, just in case any of the ball bearings uh, do happen to escape. Okay, so we've got the body off now. Okay, the ball bearings are housed um, be, between this this uh, top this disc and the inside of the housing. Um, it's all pretty gummed up. This is common. Uh, the grease is quite old. This turnbuckle hasn't been serviced forever. You can see the turnbuckles inside there, inside the ball race, and the sticky uh, old grease um, is just holding them in place. So I'll just get my Allen key here and just kind of prise them out. Um, there's there's ten of them in all per turnbuckle. Uh, they're three millimeter stainless steel ball bearings, uh, quite readily available on uh, on Amazon and the likes. Uh, so we, we just get all 10 of those out. Um, and uh, once we've done that, we've completed the disassembly. And uh, the next phase is, uh, is all about the, the cleanup. All right. So here we have uh, a tub uh, full of white spirit, as it's known in the UK, or uh, uh, mineral turpentine or terps, where I come from. Um, and we're just sort of soaking every part actually in uh, in this uh, for a few minutes. Um, it, it's really effective. At, it's not very uh, dangerous or corrosive. Uh, you, I should be wearing gloves, I guess, but uh, you know, old school. I just get a toothbrush, um, preferably not your own. Uh, I've just grabbed my wife's here. Um, hopefully, she doesn't find out. And um, yeah, just give it a simple clean. It, it, it comes up as good as new. It's very, very simple. Um, and if you're doing this on board of the boat, you know, you just, just have the tub and just dip everything, every part into it. Uh, important to get the toothbrush right into the top of the housing uh, in the inside, just to, just to um, make sure you get all that gunked up, you know, grease um, out of there, soften it all up. Um, so... You know, one by one, just going through each part. Here's the turnbuckle body, uh, just getting rid of the grease off that uh, load-bearing thread. In, important also, get rid of the grease and gunk off the inside there, uh, where the um, where the toggle thread goes into. Yeah, nice clean. Okay, here's the uh, the toggle and the thread again. You know, quick clean up. Um, it's, it's, it's underserviced actually, this one in particular, so there's not much grease to get rid of there. Uh, here's the lock nut, again, not much going on there, just a quick clean up. The, uh, next is, um, is, is we're going to dig out now the, uh, the well, that's the spring washer, now we're going to dig out uh, the ball bearings. And... Um, uh, just by virtue of sitting in there, they've come up as good as new. So dig out all of those, and um, and then we're good to go on the cleaning front. Okay, everything's looking as good as new now. Uh, and just spending a little bit of time to to wipe away the residue from the white spirit and any leftover grease that um, has been softened up. Uh, always a uh, good thing about sailing is we always end up with plenty of t-shirts so um, uh, and uh, no shortage of the supply of rags. Um, I think these are, uh, it's an old Artemis America's Cup shirt. Um, apologies, apologies Torbjorn, I'm sure you'll understand. Uh, so we're 
yeah, just give me an image. a nice clean. Um, here's the uh, the turnbuckle body. You can see inside there is still quite a bit of gunk, but the white spirit softened everything up. So I, I, I just sort of poke uh, the rag in with, with an Allen key or something similar and just give it a good clean out there. Um, get rid of all that junk. Uh, nice. Okay, we've got the... Uh, this is pretty important. Um, you can see inside the... Uh, the ball race inside the housing there. Uh, it's really important we get that really clean um, and make make the surface uh, as as free from any debris or old grease as we can. So again, you know, and just just putting the Allen key, covering it with a rag, poking it in there, giving it a a, a good turning it around, and, and just making sure that's gone. So we're pretty much good to go here now. Um, see the it's it's uh, all shiny as good as new inside of the ball race there okay now the next bit is a little tricky um, uh, and we need to place the 10 ball bearings uh, back back on one part of the ball race uh, what I do is is I uh, I just put a liberal coating of grease uh, this does two things not only provides some lubrication for the balls, uh, but also it, it, it's slightly sticky and, and holds them in place. Um, so if you're doing this on the boat, again, work over the top of a bucket because there's no doubt you'll drop one or two. Um, I just use normal grease. Um, uh, you're supposed to use lanolin grease, I think. Um, it's like wool grease, uh, Kiwis love that. Uh, but I get away with normal grease. Um, so you can see I'm just one by one, just placing the ball bearings onto the race. Um, uh, grease has provided a, a sticky surface, which is nice. Whoop, just dropped one. There we go. Lucky we're not above water. Okay. And important we do have the whole 10. Would recommend you uh, stocking a spares kit with some 3mm stainless steel ball bearings. Okay, here we go. Um, the housing back over the top. Uh, just check the balls are, are nicely engaged in the race um, and uh, you can see that is beautiful. Okay, so just holding the housing um, tightly. Uh, simply, we, we just need to uh, thread the turnbuckle body back on. Um, nice to, to just, just for the sake of uh, easy maintenance next time put a little coating of grease on there um, and what's important here is that we thread it into the point where the, the holes again line up. Okay um, now that I've got my holes lined up I've threaded that turnbuckle body in uh, I've now got a four millimeter roll pin uh, that I'm going to drive into place um, it's I've, I've got the luxury of doing this here in the man cave in uh, with a vice um, you just need to be careful. You do have it perfectly lined up. Uh, we'll just just drive that roll pin in there. Uh, doing this on board the Etchells is a little tricky. It, it, advisable to have a couple of you. You need to hold a dolly against the uh, against the the turnbuckle. Um, but once you get it lined up, it goes straight in, uh, looking good. Okay, we'll just uh, put a, a, a small uh, amount of grease now on the um, on the thread. I recommend you do this at least once a regatta to be honest with you no one does but um i guarantee if you you just just if you just did this step if you just unwound the turnbuckle from the thread and um and gave it a quick clean and then reapplied some fresh grease i'd say it'd be at least 30 to 40 percent easier to turn all right so put our lock nut back on the uh the, the conical surface uh, pointing downwards towards the toggle, the flat face pointing upwards, and, and um, let's get it on a few turns, and then uh, we we make sure we've got the spring washer loaded as well. Um, that, that just helps the the lock nut take effect easier. Oops, and then simply. A matter of getting a getting the uh, turnbuckle body threaded back into the uh, the the thread on the toggle, and um, Bob's your uncle. You're away. There we go. Fully serviced, just like new Brolga turnbuckle.
bit of mucking around, probably takes about 10 minutes a turnbuckle. You'd allow, I would say, hour and a half thereabouts to uh, do all four on the boat by the time you get set up. Okay, now we're on to the PKM turnbuckle. Uh, in terms of disassembly, uh, we'll handle that first. Uh, we're going to remove that indicator disc, the, uh, the, the red plastic indicator disc. A little fiddly, uh, we just need to get the Allen key into the retaining screw, uh, which is located in the top of the turnbuckle thread. Um, I locate that in the screw, I give the toggle a few turns, it undoes, and I just need to shake out the, uh, the disc and its retaining screw. Um, there you go, she's out. So pretty simple, little fiddly. Uh, then it's really simply a matter of, uh, now that that disc is removed, uh, the thread, there's nothing stopping the thread from, um, uh, from being spun all the way out. Uh, so, so off we go. Here we go, we've got it out. You can see there it's locked up, stuff still on the thread. Uh, fine thread, as we know, as we pointed out before. Um, six to, uh, 24 teeth per inch actually this thread as opposed to 16 teeth per inch on the brolga. Uh, so three turns on this to two turns on the brolga. Okay so um, now we're just left with the body uh, and you'll notice in the bottom um, there is a, um, a brass insert. A good thing about brass is the risk of uh, any thread galling where the, where the, the threads uh, jam up on each other is virtually zero with that material um, and also allows smooth movement of the threads. Uh, so to remove this uh, it's held in place actually by a, a, a very small three millimeter grub screw. Um, so in order to remove that we need to remove the grub screw uh, just grab my uh, two millimeter Allen key, uh, and it's it's uh, a little fiddly. I mean, it comes out very easily, but you just need to be a little careful because uh, it's a it's a it's a tiny part. Okay, now that's out. Um, there's probably a, a circlip removal tool or something that that helps this step, this next step. But literally, all I do is is I just poke two to uh, Allen keys inside the holes and um, put a screwdriver across the two of them, well between the two of them and turn and uh, that allows the brass insert fitting to come out. There she is. Okay and uh, and then it's simply a matter of uh, poking the top roll swage together with the bearing out of the bottom. Here's the turnbuckle body. It's quite lightweight, thin wall uh, and um, now we remove the bearing and uh, above and below the bearing uh, are two um, hardened steel washers. Um, so that's, that's the first one. Now here's the bearing cage and here's the second washer. Okay, there's the, uh, the bottom disc that's threaded onto the roll swage fitting uh, together with a, um, a uh, split pin to, to hold it in place. All very simple. All, all parts we're familiar with, um, and not a lot can really go wrong. Um, this is really the secret behind the whole thing, is this fantastic uh, thrust bearing. It's um, a, a plastic cage, if you like, that contains a, a bunch of roller bearings on a uh, radial orientation. So again, not a lot can go wrong. Um, that steel is super hard um, and, and has not we haven't seen it degrade really at all. Okay, we'll just go through the uh, the reassembly now quickly and then just look at the, the maintenance and servicing. Uh, so we're just reassembling here the uh, the bearing arrangement. Um, you'll notice there's some lettering on the on the uh, thrust washers. Obviously just important to get the smooth side facing the, uh, the bearing. The top one smooth side facing down, the bottom one smooth side facing up. Okay, pretty simple. Um, insert the roll swage back into the back into the 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 body. Okay, just just have a quick feel. Make sure it's all engaged. Okay, in the, the brass insert now goes in. Again, like, similar to the brogue, we just need to be absolutely sure that the uh, that the hole for the grub screw lines up perfectly with the the hole in the body. 
Um, so it's pretty simple though. You'll see if you've got it wrong, you have to go one turn more or one turn less to get it perfect. Okay, so there's my grub screw, just putting it into the uh, two mil Allen key. Uh, just important, you don't know, don't try to over tighten this. Um, we don't need to lock tight it either. Just nip it up. It ain't going to go anywhere. Okay, and there we go. That's you know it's pretty much the hard part done. Um, the indicator disc, a little fiddly to get in. Um, we might do that later on off camera. Um, and um, simply, we just simply uh, turn the um, turn the, the, the body back onto the toggle thread. Um, in the ideal world, you'd, you'd allow, you'd, you'd, you'd put some grease on there as well. Um, but the dissimilar metals, um, you get away with it without too much grease. Um, now, in terms of servicing, um, when the when you, the rig's in place, uh, really all I do is uh, I, I back the turnbuckles right off, uh, so they're just hanging there, um, and you're able to uh, for the bearing to to be accessed through the side ports, and then literally uh, all I do is I ensure I give it a good flush out. I'll hold I'll hold the um, the the top sway the top washer up. Uh, once it's flushed out, um, then I'll just literally get some three-in-one oil, nice uh, low viscosity oil, give it a good squirt into the actual radial bearings, um, and then uh, reseat the bearing uh, up to the top of the body, and then give it a few turns and just let the oil um, get around all the bearings, top, bottom, um, and so on. And and really, that's that's about the only maintenance you need. Um, you don't need to take the whole thing apart to to service it, which is it's a nice benefit, uh, saves you a lot of time and, and a bunch of hassle.